Hello there, what do we have? We have a pretty picture, pretty colors, violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. And so these are, of course, the colors of the rainbow. And so uh, how do you see a rainbow? Well, you got to have some rain. But where's the sun got to be? you got to have some sun shining behind you. So the sun behind you, the rain in front of you, if you're fortunate, you'll see this beautiful sight uh, called a rainbow. And so uh, what about this uh, white light right above me here? What is it? It looks white. I don't doesn't look violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, or red. What is it? Well, if I had the right equipment, I could take that white light above me and split it into the colors of the rainbow, <coughs> violet through red. And uh, so, somehow all these colors together add up to white. Uh, I don't know exactly how that works. Well, let's notice something else about the colors of the rainbow called visible light because our, our uh, eyes and brains and so forth, uh, they're set up to uh, respond to those particular wavelengths, uh, but these uh, wavelengths of visible light are actually a small part of a much longer electromagnetic spectrum. How does the spectrum work? Well, let's see. How is it set up, in other words? Well, it goes uh, the way it's set up here. Uh, to the left, we have wavelengths of the highest energy to the right wavelengths of the lowest energy. So left to right it goes from high energy to low energy. It also goes from the shorter wavelengths to the longer wavelengths. Short to long. So high energy corresponds to what? Short wavelength. Low energy corresponds to long wavelengths. Gee, uh, which is the uh, more dangerous end of this spectrum? Well, I think to the left. Let's take a quick look. What do we got here? Just outside violet a somewhat shorter wavelength, the higher energy than violet, is ultraviolet. And then we see x-rays and gamma rays. To the right, just past red, outside red, somewhat lower, lower energy and longer wavelength than red, is infrared. And outside that, microwaves and radio waves. What do we have down here in this, uh, the lower part of this diagram? We have a leaf, and we see wavelengths doing one of two things, bouncing off, or uh, something else here. And so we see the green wavelengths bouncing off. Uh, I think that's called reflection. Yes, they are reflected. And sort of the greenish yellow also, also being reflected. But uh, violet and blue, they are being what? They are being absorbed into the leaf. And up here, orange and red for sure are being, and maybe some of the uh, yellow as well, are being absorbed into the leaf. What do you suppose they're doing in there? Well, they have something to do with that process, that, that very extremely important process to life, called what do you suppose? Photosynthesis. And so, let's take a look at one other picture. Uh, we see here a leaf, a cross section through the leaf, a leaf cell, and chloroplast, etc. Well, you know, leaves are just so pretty, aren't they? I mean, there's been so many paintings and drawings and poems about leaves, but what is the leaf in essence? What is its function? It functions as a factory, a factory, a, a most essential factory to life, to living things, to, to us, believe it or not. Uh, what's going on inside the leaf factories is absolutely essential to our existence. And so uh, factories need raw materials, do they not? Yeah, out of the raw materials, for the manufacturing, what's manufactured by the way? Well, all the macromolecules are manufactured. Uh, beginning with a very simple one we've talked about many times, that being our old friend glucose. But how do the raw materials get to these, uh, these cells, these cells like this one, how do they get into the leaf, into the cells, where all this manufacturing takes place? Get to the assembly lines within the cells. Well, some of the raw materials come up the stem. Sure they do, and so they come in through uh, uh, this is called a petiole, I won't ask you that, but some of the raw materials come in through the petiole. Other raw materials that are gases come in, actually there's one main one, I shouldn't say gas says, there is a gas that is crucially important to the manufacturing process that comes in, that comes in through these openings. And so, uh, and other waste gases uh, diffuse outward through these openings. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about this manufacturing process in future videos. But there you have it, our introduction to photosynthesis.